So my next guest, which I would love to bring him up, is Melvin McCraig. And Melvin um, is the executive producer of an amazing film that I got a chance to work on when uh, we went to um, Tanzania. So I'm part of the West Harlem community and um, we have West Harlem filmmakers and the filmmakers went to Tanzania to do an exchange with filmmakers there. And our film is called, which is a work in progress and I still have to do my part of the film, but the, the film is called Harlem to Kilimanjaro. So as you can see, I have my Harlem hat and I have, which is called a blanket from the Maasai people. So if we can bring up Melvin. Hi, Richard. Hello, Melvin, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. I see that you actually have our film poster behind you. Oh yeah. It looks really great. Well, thanks for having me on. I've been enjoying the uh, production so far, it's been phenomenal. Well, thank you very much. And I wanted to actually say thank you for giving me the opportunity to actually see another part of, of Africa, which was very, I don't want to say very different. It was, I don't want to say very different. I would just say it was different than um, some of the other parts that I had visited before. So um, I wanted to say thank you very much. And spending the time with the other filmmakers was really great. Um, as many of my friends you know, this isn't my lane. Usually I'm always putting people in front of the camera. So I'm challenging myself to be in front of the camera right now. So again, this is actually really great. But when on the trip, I'm also play uh, uh, the, I don't want to say play. I was the sound man. So I got a chance to 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 uh, learn a little bit about sound and putting that together because I'm usually the producer guy that's kind of putting everything together. So um, I wanted to say thank you very much, Melvin, for giving me that opportunity. So with that actually said, so Melvin, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, the project, and uh, where we are now? And we'll just you know chop it up for the next 15 minutes, and then we'll see the first 15 minutes of the film, I believe. Yeah, 17 minutes. So 17 minutes. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, I had a career at ABC News, a uh, broadcast journalist. I was an editor at World News Tonight, and I was also teaching part-time at uh, Columbia Graduate School of Journalism. And I decided that uh, I really wanted to teach storytelling to people, uh, residents of Harlem, um, three blocks from the university, uh, so I started in 2013 uh, with the digital media training program. And at the same time, Columbia was building a new campus um, on 125th Street and Broadway. And the community uh, entered into a community benefits agreement with Columbia, where they set aside $76 million to benefit uh, Manhattan Community District 9. And so we've been getting grants every year uh, and working with people in uh, Community District 9. And so we've been doing a lot of things. We've won the White House Student Film Festival uh, t uh, two times in 2015, yep. 2016. Got a chance to take a trip to the White House. Uh, it was hosted by uh, President Barack Obama. Uh, and I was looking for something else to do that would be interesting. And I had been to Tanzania twice before in 1986 and 1990. Mm -hmm. And I had a phenomenal time. Uh, my family and I went uh, and we got a chance to meet uh, the founder of the country, uh, President uh, Julius Kamarage Nereri. And he'd always been a hero of mine because I had studied uh, politics at Princeton University. Right. And I wanted to, I wanted to meet him. Um, and through some connections that my wife had uh, with uh, Maida Springer Kemp, her godmother, uh, who helped Nereri uh, start the country, helped him, um, it was a British protectorate back in the late 50s, and 
uh, he petition, petitioned the UN for statehood. And so through her connections, uh, Maida Springer Kemp, we were able to travel and meet Nareri in 86 and in 90. So I decided, well, let's go back to Tanzania and right. uh, let's get a group of Harlem-based filmmakers uh, to travel there and to immerse ourselves in East African culture, particularly the Maasai culture. So we got a chance to do that. And it was absolutely amazing. And as um, Aisha mentioned, like when you get a chance to go, it, it really is life changing. And it's interesting because I had a conversation with a couple of my friends and they were just like, well, it just seems like you're romanticizing this, the scenario <laughs> and the situation. But it, it really that wasn't the case. I mean, I really was was changed. And I, I can't thank you enough for, you know, just that opportunity as well to bring it back and share share what I saw and what I learned um, um, there as well. So I wanted to say thank you again. Well, you know, I was trying to accomplish four or five things. I don't know if I quite accomplished everything that I set out, but one of the things I wanted to do was to immerse ourselves in the culture of the Maasai tribe, uh, which uh, is a, about a million people that spans uh, Tanzania and Kenya. Uh, and they are agrarian um, cattle herders, uh, and they they really cling to their traditions. And they're faced with some challenges. Uh, climate right. change is drying things up and uh, population explosion is encroaching on their land. So I wanted to find out, you know, what really made them tick and, and, and how they um, viewed the world. And so that was one of the things. And we did get to uh, spend a few days with them out in the sticks. Uh, so we lived in tents. And it we was, did. Uh, Phenomenal experience, um, I thought. Um, the other it thing was, I wanted to, it, you, you enjoyed it? I, I totally did, I, I totally enjoyed it. I got pictures too, so I'll make sure that I post them for everybody to see. And the other thing I wanted to do was to connect with some uh, local filmmakers um, in Tanzania uh, and to develop some kind of collaboration. Uh, that's still a work in progress. I know uh, I had hoped to have some of them come over to the States, but right. obviously with COVID, we're not doing that right now. Um, and the other thing I wanted to do was to connect with a uh, charity there. And we connected with the uh, Leaders of Tomorrow uh, Children's uh, Home um, at, um, in, right outside of Arusha, Tanzania. And some members of our groups actually sponsored um, two of the uh, people, uh, students in that uh, home to go to uh, boarding school. So that was, that was great. Um, and I wanted to um, go on safari, uh, which we did. We went to Ngorogoro Crater. Yes, we did. Um, it was beautiful. And I wanted to film the whole process. So we put together a film, Harlem to Kilimanjaro. It's a work in progress. We had a screening at Columbia. Yes, uh, we did. And we hope to have a, another one in our real soon. Um, and it's a, it was a phenomenal experience. I think we pretty much uh, accomplished many of the things we set out to do, but it, as I say, it's a work. It, the whole process is a work in progress. Yep. So one of the things that um, um, I had a chance to do, and I have the picture, and I didn't give it to Lamont in enough time, so he would be able to show it. Um, one of my most exciting parts of the trip is I got a chance to plant a tree in Tanzania that I got a chance to leave, and I have a um, one of the young. Um, uh, um, boys there, he said that he was going to take care of it. So we called him Little Richard. So I have my Little Richard tree that he is taking care of. So I'm I'm really, really excited about that because it gave me a chance to leave a little bit of me back on, to, on the continent. So I was very, very excited and hopefully I get a chance to go back and, and see how, how, how big, you know, he got. But with that actually said, I know that we have just a, a few more minutes and I have one more question. Um, and my question to you, Melvin, is um, why is uh, Pan-Africanism so important, and especially the visibility of film and television and what we actually do is so important, you know, to share it with um, not only the folks here in America, but in the world and that connection with the continent? Well, you know, I, I think that question is sort of like a personal question for everybody. I know for me, uh, I was really, um, you know, and 
respected uh, Julius Nereri, and I wanted to go and meet him. Um, you know, you hear so many things about uh, African leaders, uh, but here is one uh, who had integrity. Uh, he was really uh, for building his nation. Uh, he did have uh, Pan-African um, aspirations. Uh, he actually wanted to unify the East African countries, uh, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Zanzibar. And he worked very hard to try to make that happen. And for a time, they did uh, organize an East African Union. Uh, but in, in the long run, only Zanzibar and Tanzania were, were unified. Uh, but, you know, he was one of the people, along with um, Kwame Nkrumah, um, who really believed that uh, unifying Africa was going to be in Africa's best interest. Um, and he worked very hard uh, to do that. So for me, uh, going to Africa was the big impetus was to, um, to meet someone that I revered and I thought was, had integrity and, and really did. I mean, besides, you know, Nelson Mandela and maybe Kwame Nkrumah, Jewish Nereri really stands out as one of the uh, phenomenal leaders uh, of that continent. Great. So we're getting ready to see um, um, parts of the film, which is, like you mentioned, is a work in progress. If you want to just, just uh, set it up a little bit about what we're getting ready to actually see, we'll go into the film. And then I wanted to say thank you very much, Melvin, for, you know, spending the, this, the time and, and entering the space with us on a Sunday. You could have been anywhere, and I'm glad that you chose to be with us. So I wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you again. Well, thanks for inviting me. And, and the portions of the film we're going to see is our work with the uh, Maasai. Uh, and we're also going to uh, take a look at our work with some of the um, uh, Tanzanian musicians that we had an opportunity to uh, record a song with. Um, one of uh, well, two in our group, um, Bill Tolls, uh, is a musician. He plays the bass. Uh, and he played the bass on, on this recording. And um, we also had um, um, Mr. Diop, who uh, also uh, recorded uh, a rap uh, on the song. And so we're going to uh, look at the recording studio. The recording studio is part of the United uh, African uh, uh, Alliance Community Center uh, run by Pete and Charlotte O'Neill, uh, which I guess is the fifth leg of what I wanted to do. I wanted to reconnect with the, the work that Pete and Charlotte O'Neill were doing in Tanzania, and they run um, the Leaders of Tomorrow uh, Children's uh, Home uh, in Arusha, right outside of Arusha in a village called Imbasani. And um, we are, I, I understand that um, they also bring in uh, college groups uh, to come in, and believe it or not, they just had a group of African Americans travel to Tanzania um, this past week which is the first group that has uh, wow. returned there since the COVID outbreak. Wow. Uh, and strangely enough, there's very little COVID in Tanzania. Right. The hospitals yep. are not overrun and uh, very few um, cases that, that they know about. So, so let's keep our fingers crossed that it stays that way. Well, it was interesting because when we entered into the country, you know, they took our temperature they, and we didn't, that didn't even happen you know, wasn't even going on. So I, I thought that that was actually really great that they, they took that very seriously. And one of the things that I did learn, and I just wanted to share this when we were actually um, with um, oh, Papa Pete and, and Mama, Mama C, um, the, the phrase that kept coming to coming or I kept hearing about our, the Buma, and which uh, hopefully you guys will learn a little bit about that in, in, in the film. If you take care of the community, the community will take care of you. You take care of the village, the village will take care of you. And I just thought that that was so interesting and so true. And when I came back, I really wanted to walk in the, in those words that if I take care of my community, my community will, will take care of me. So, um, I, 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 I wanted just to share share that um, as well. So you remember the BOMA? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're so, going to teach you a lot of Swahili words. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 well, um, Bishop Tolton is coming on and I, I told him that we need to uh, already start taking our, our Swahili classes. So, um, but w w I'll save that for when I talk to him. But thank you very much, Melvin. We're getting ready to start the film so we can make sure that we stay on time. Did you, any last words that you would like to say before, before we, we go? Well, I just want to say our next project, uh, we are 
doing a uh, storytelling workshop and we're going to be using iPhones. Uh, we got a uh, grant again from the West Harlem uh, Development Corporation, which is the Columbia University uh, funding. Uh, and we're going to, we also got a grant from the Apple um, uh, Corporation, uh, which donated some iPhones and some funding. So we're going to be doing a workshop. So anybody interested in uh, participating in this um, uh, storytelling workshop using iPhones, um, please contact us at www.harlemeyes.com. That's Harlem, E Y E S.com. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd be glad to uh, talk to you about it. That'd be great. And I'm going to make sure that I put all of the links um, on our, our link tree for everyone um, that they would be able to, to be able to see it. So thank you very much, Melvin. Um, and we're going to watch the film. It's the next 17 minutes. Thank you. Take care. This is Harlem to Kilimanjaro. Have you ever been to Harlem? With funding from Columbia University through a community benefits agreement, I started the nonprofit digital media training program in 2013. The program taught photography, journalism, and filmmaking to residents of the Harlem community in New York City. Let's give it up to our outstanding young filmmakers. We won the White House Student Film Festival in 2015 and 2016 and were invited to the White House ceremonies. One of my early students was Kadeem Diop. He became a budding filmmaker and actor. He starred in the independent feature Chapter and Verse. I got you. You live and you learn a whole chapter and verse. On our latest project, we took Diop and a group of Harlem based filmmakers on a trip to Arusha, Tanzania. I'm a student here at City College of New York, and this semester I'll be graduating with a degree in film production. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to this trip and hope to learn a lot. Africa! 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 Tanzania, East Africa is 7,444 miles southeast of New York. It is an extraordinarily beautiful country, teeming with wildlife, and the fourth largest mountain in the world, the 19,000-foot Mount Kilimanjaro. But Tanzania's most defining characteristic may be the diversity of its people, comprising over 120 tribes. The country has been free of intertribal conflict due to the unifying force of the official language, Swahili and the visionary leadership of its founding president, Julius Kamarage Nyerere. And I don't see why in Tanganyika we cannot base our, our rights of citizenship, our duties of citizenship on loyalty to the country instead of the color of a person's skin or the texture of a person's, a person's hair. We, we The Maasai people are one of the most distinctive of the East African tribes. Their traditional music is sung by a lead singer and accompanied by a chorus. The polyrhythms that the women sang when we first got there were uh, polyrhythms I, had, I was not familiar with. So it took me a second to get my bearings on it, more than a second. There's one lead melody where she is telling, greeting us and telling us the story about how grateful they are to God and et cetera, et cetera. And that, that rhythm is floating free of the underlying pulse, but it's still tied to it. It's like singing the blues, you know, where you're, ahead of the beat, you're behind the beat, depending on what you're doing, you're slurring a note. Their rhythm is, uh, in a typical African fashion, it's, it's malleable, it's in and out of the, of the main pulse. Bill Tolles gives a ceremonial donation of cornmeal and sugar to the tribe. We're then greeted by Saya, a tribal elder and board member of the Conjero Tourism Group. 
and Nayama, a member of the women's committee. As we introduce ourselves, I explained that in 1986, my family and I traveled here to meet with Julius Nereri, the founder and first president of Tanzania. And we met with Mwalimu Julius Nereri. And I have a photo. I passed around the photograph for all to see. But in case they didn't recognize me, I quickly explained. I had a lot more hair back then. <laughs> I went on to tell the Maasai that my meeting with Nereri was because of my wife's godmother, Maida Springer Kemp. She was best friends with my wife's mother, Dolly Lothar Robinson. They were both formidable forces in the labor movement in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Robinson with the Amalgamated Clothing Workers of America, and Kemp with the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. Kemp rose through the ranks and became an international representative for the American Federation of Labor and traveled the world, becoming one of the most influential yet unsung labor leaders of her time. During the late 1950s, when Tanganyika was still a British protectorate, Kemp helped Nereri successfully petition the United Nations for independence. It was granted in 1961. I studied African leaders while writing about the Organization of African Unity for my undergraduate thesis at Princeton University. I admired Nereri for his intelligence, integrity, and his support of liberation struggles in Southern Africa. But I was riding on Maida Springer Kemp's coattails when my family and I traveled to Tanzania to meet Julius Nereri face to face. President Nereri, many African Americans see Africa as the motherland. However, some African Americans are really disconnected from Africa and believe all the negative stereotypes. What would you say to them? Well, I don't know what I can say to Afro Americans. Um... You know, it's one of those <clears throat> arrogances of history where Afro-Americans at one time, here were these people whose ancestors were taken from Africa by force. I mean, we must, uh, we must admit this, taken by force to the Western world. And the attempt was made at one time to make Afro-Americans to be ashamed of Africa. And in the meantime, of course, this Africa was, was devastated by the white man during slavery. And then the white men wanted to end slavery, and they came to end slavery, to save us and end slavery by colonizing the continent. So that was the continent which uh, the black American was told to be ashamed of. Well, that's history. That's history. Uh, today, I... Today is the other way around, I think. Today, Africans are being warned to, to watch out. Uh, black Americans might uh, want to come to Africa and dominate it. This is, again, one of those nonsensical things. It is natural uh, for, for blacks to, to think of Africa. It's the, the, the home of the ancestors. And really, I hope they'll maintain that, maintain it, not be ashamed of Africa. We can develop Africa, and you can, you can, you can help. Julius Nereri died in 1999 at the age of 77. And I'm giving thanks for those very beautiful stories we heard about Nyerere because Nyerere is our father and our founding father of the nation. We learned a lot from our visit to the village of Osinye and shared a bit of our knowledge with the Maasai. <laughs> the women are famous for their beautiful handmade beaded jewelry, and our group was treated to a marketplace where we purchased some of their one-of-a-kind creations. We visited their homes, constructed by the Maasai women. We milked the village goats. 
and were treated to a traditional goat sacrifice. We also spent time walking through the countryside, talking to an elder named Pita about the changes in the Maasai lifestyle over the years. The big cats, I'm talking about cheetahs, uh, leopard, lions, they're not coming to these areas because of population of people. They, they don't feel comfortable to be close to people because most of the time they end up attacking animals and Maasai attack them back because they protect the animals. At night, we experienced the traditional Maasai dance of the young men and women of the village. I love watching people dance. I love dancing. It just feels so good uh, to get out of your head and in your body and in watching people's body tell stories. I got the opportunity to jump in. I just jumped in feet first. Definitely hypnotic. It definitely puts you like in this kind of like trance kind of feeling. And it, but it felt and resonated so good. That register, that part of your, my body that was buzzing while I was making those sounds, it was it just felt like soothing. <laughs> The Maasai are cattle herders, and their traditional nomadic pastoral lifestyle has become more challenging due to population growth and climate change. In order to survive, many Maasai have moved into urban areas and adopted modern customs. Music that we create from our own flavor, the traditional, the indigenous kind of rhythms. G.P. Obikoto is a Maasai musician, entrepreneur, poet, and founder of Mist Africa, a foundation that uses the power of the arts and music, especially hip-hop, to empower young people in their communities. G.P.'s musical partner is James Jeremiah Mushi, also known as Wise Man. He is a Maasai tribesman from the nearby city of Moshi. While GP has adopted modern customs, he also recognizes the importance of Maasai traditions and clings to them even while operating in a contemporary urban setting. He maintains a family farm and participates in traditional Maasai observances. Music is taking all our feelings to Jah, Most High. GP also focuses his attention on environmental issues, and his Mist Africa Foundation sponsors urban cleanups and health clinics to promote good hygiene and disease prevention. <laughs> But most people know GP as a musician and owner of the Kaizari Club and Cultural Center. And our vision is to change Kaizari Club into a creative hub or a creative art center. It's a venue he inherited from his father, Julius Bayani Kivuyu Obikoto. My father, he really wanted us to like really go to school and nothing else. Just go to school, finish your studies, be a doctor or engineer, and that's all. He had this old Afro music and from Congo, Zaire. That was the best music they, they always listened. So he always like, he could tell me, what are you doing? Is that music? Because he could see me like rapping something. <laughs> what? I, I just see you like, like just doing some kind of shouting. Is that really music? And I'm like, yeah, this really nice music. You just can't understand it because you, you, you really have to listen and really get to know it. Open your eyes and just listen your mind. Spare at you know, spare at you know. Kumbeshima me kucha kuzika kwenye goja mtanga ni kama asili kutoweka kwenye matendo mtanzania jami. Spare at you know, spare at you know, spare at you know, spare at you know. Where we found my friend, it's better to know, it's better to know.
two of our Harlem filmmakers, Bill Tolles and Kadeem Diop, are also musicians. They were invited into the studio of the United African Alliance Community Center to record a song with G.P. Obikoto and his musical partner, Wise Man. The song is called Maisha Africa, Living in a Paradise. Yes, we live in a paradise, the Mashaya Africa. Mama, we live in a paradise, the Mashaya Africa. Fresh, fresh, yeah, the part of the Mashaya Africa. Fresh, fresh. Thank you, I'm so grateful, feeling like dreams came to for this moment, can't repay you, so for that I praise you, please, you raised me on my feet, provided all my needs, and with your energy, I'm a jazz, roll up sleeves, work the field, sow the seeds, first we learn, then we tease, spread in power, love and peace, I'm a revolutionary word that mama see and papa peep. Africa, in our heads, is a place that, you know, people are afraid of, people uh, don't know much about, but I wanted to, to say something about it that can inspire somebody to want to go there, to want to feel like they need to go there to, to gain some type of awareness about themselves. Being on on like African soil, it, it really it made me feel like closer to God for some reason.